can't hit it, and can't hit it again. It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And up next, we'll see Robert Woods. He starts play fourth in the NFL in receiving yardage. It's the Titans and the Cowboys on Thursday night primetime. Being located in the music city, this building has hosted a lot of great music acts since its inception. But this is what she was made for, NFL football, and that's what we have today in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. Tonight, on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tennessee Titans. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we take a look at this Titan ball club entering play. They come in mired in a brutal stretch right now. Losers of eight straight games. Can you imagine going two straight months without winning a game and still trying to hold it together? They've got to find some inspiration somewhere that can lead them to a victory. Meanwhile, for the visitors here, the Cowboys, they're in a real groove of late. Winners of five of their last six games. Kick this one away, and off it goes. On the return, Tony Pollard from his end zone. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Cowboys taking the field on offense, and for a seventh season, it's Dak Prescott who brings him out. I like this guy, and the reason I do, he tends to stand an even keel. Doesn't let too much ruffle him. He will manage the game the way it needs to be managed, take what the defense gives him, and then he can strike at times. Had a touchdown pass. Yes, he had an interception last week, but he found a way for his team to win. They start on the ground with Elliott. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line. Second and a yard. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. That one, a first down pickup of eight. The Cowboys at 9-6 and six now. They've been playing their best football of the year, winners of four in a row. And they were able to tough it out last week, a close one-score game, and those are the kind of wins that pull you together as a team because everyone gains confidence, and they feel like they can continue to get better. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. That yeah, was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no game. On second down, Elliott, and he's got room. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. But well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, with that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Here's Prescott. They're looking for Lamb, but it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And the Titans are going to get the football here as they force the INT on the game's opening drive. Well, it's no secret he's had trouble this year with interceptions, and this is a bad start for him. First drive, throwing another pick. No matter who's broadcasting his game, that's how the conversation begins. Throwing too many interceptions, can he take care of the football? If I were his backup, I'd be edging towards the coaches and saying, hey, how about giving me an opportunity? Here come the Titans for their first possession on offense and leading them out in his fourth season with the team, 10th overall in the NFL, Ryan Tannehill. 
Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The, the numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a receiver? And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. The numbers on the ground for Henry last week. 21 carries, 82 yards. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Here's Tannehill. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Trayvon Diggs. And the Cowboys are going to take over at their own 13-yard line. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And they've got to be breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. The first time you throw the football winds up being picked, but fortunately for them, it does not lead to points. Well, that tells you about team football, doesn't it? Everybody gets together. What's that term they use? Complimentary football? Okay, he threw the pick. The defense got together and said, hey, let's shut them down. Let's not turn it into points. They did exactly that. Nike, it's a fresh start, a clean slate. Dak dropping this one off for Zeke. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up third and one. Charles Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat, is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys that have a little extra pep in their step, you go to them early and often. Well, after an interception, last thing you want to do is go three and out, give the ball right back. They avoided that. Yeah, you definitely do not want to do that. I remember in college, I played with a really big-time player on defense. We ended up getting an interception as we passed the offense coming out. He told him, if you don't take care of this football, you have to answer to me later. You definitely want to take care of it, pick up first downs. On first and 10, Prescott. They're looking for Lamb, but it's intercepted. It's Roger McCreary with a pick. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. Crucial foul. Rocking the pass on the defense. How big is that penalty? Wipe out the INT. You'd hate to be the teammate that caused that penalty and wiped out the interception. You got to face that guy in the locker room. Not a lot of fun for you, and you hurt your squad. Inside give to Elliott. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Here's second and nine. Just a yard on that last run. Looking to throw. Prescott. Able to hit his target, Lamb. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards the pick up there. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On the slant, he finds Washington. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. the shotgun again to Elliott and he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott with career touchdown number 75 and the Cowboys take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Start of the second quarter and it's the Cowboys in possession. The kick team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. 
And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it on the field, and that brings up second down. On second and ten, Tannehill. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. You know, Charles, for this defense, look, it's no secret. You're facing a team that is really, really struggling. They haven't won in what seems like forever, but sometimes a desperate team can be a dangerous team, right? You're exactly right about that, but they shouldn't be. When they're on that type of a losing streak, it's incumbent upon you to take charge of this game early and not give them any reason to hope. Get out and attack them and make sure you knock them back on their butts. Personal foul. Facement. Ethan. So a tug on the face mask, and that's going to cost him 15 yards. And sometimes it'll go unnoticed, but that one, pretty obvious for everyone to see. Up the middle, here's Elliott. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. That's a really nice tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their home with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. Holding. Offense. You can see this quite a bit on running plays where the guy's out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected. But I know this will surprise you. I took some receivers in the offseason. We worked a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. Better want to take that course. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. A nice chunk play from the tight end position, and it illustrates the cohesiveness that he and his quarterback have. Both saw the extra defender doubling him up, and it's still combined for the completion and big gain. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. And when all you want to do is keep your drive going, quarterback sneaks a great call, isn't it? Pick it up. Get a new set of downs. And on third down, you know, usually you think fourth down quarterback sneak. There, though, it worked on third. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Throwing. Prescott. Touchdown, Cowboys! Jalen Tobert, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Cowboys have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Now that touchdown won't allow you to totally relax, but you can breathe a little easier now. Just increased their lead. Mar on for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14 nothing. Five plays there on that drive. And it was finished off by a Jalen Tolbert touchdown grab. The kick team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Tennessee offense set to go again. 
They are currently mired in a losing streak. Now they get the short week for the Thursday night game. Do you see that as a potential positive, or is this just more of what has been really a string of bad luck for them? Well, to me, it comes down to leadership, and leadership's got to spin it into a positive and make it an advantage for them. Yes, we're in a losing streak. Yes, no one thinks we can win, but we have the resources we need right here in this room. Let's go ahead and play better. Let's hang together and shock the world a little bit. Put it all together, they've got a chance of coming out with a W. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Tannehill. Henry's got it out on the left side. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Demarcus Lawrence in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And, and just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if I'm going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe mm -hmm. a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. It may just be the second quarter, but he's in his zone, well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books. But it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that means he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. And he's up over midfield and down into Tennessee territory. 84 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. A reminder that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll check in with Jonathan Coachman from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. On second down, Elliott once more. No, oh, Elliott going to be hit. He coughs it up. Loose football. It's picked up by the Titans. Past the 20. And they are going to bring this one back. A fumble return touchdown for the Titans. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. And that one makes it 14-7. to seven. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Zeke and the Cowboys ready to begin their next drive. Looking for a bounce back. Had the fumble a moment ago that went for a touchdown the other direction. See if he can get back in rhythm. And you have to be very careful about having too quick of a hook with really good players. I did a guy's game in high school where he fumbled three times in the first. Oh, that's in the double coverage and intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byer, and they will set up shot in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. You don't see this often. The quarterback of his caliber, two first-half interceptions. It's absolutely surprising because it happens so rarely. You're searching for what reason, what's going on out there. It's not just maybe the defense is playing well. Is his horoscope off? His bio 
algorithms, what is it? You went horoscope on us, David. Well, I was thinking maybe REM sleep was off. I'm trying to come up with something. Anything, right? That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Now Tannehill. And this complete to Henry over the middle. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Tannehill throwing again. Eluding the pressure right. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, this is a half for not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. On second and 10, Tannehill forced out to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. And he's not quite going to get to the marker. It'll be a gain of eight on third and ten. Now a timeout called for by the defense as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. There you go. There you go. They'll run for it with Henry. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. Tannehill. And he'll get this underneath to Henry. And it's a Titans touchdown. Derrick Henry. He has career touchdown number 78, tying in with both Eddie George and Frank Gifford on the all-time list. And the Titans have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Joseph connects on the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Throwing again, Prescott on second and 10. He finds his man, complete. That's Schultz. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. Final play of the half, Prescott. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17 as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in just a moment. But first, let's give everybody a look at what's coming up this weekend in the NFL. One of the best of the early games, we'll highlight it there. The Giants in for a stern test at home at MetLife Stadium as they'll take on the visiting Indianapolis Colts. Later in the afternoon, a lot of the country will be watching the game at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, where it'll be the Packers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. And then finally, a good one on Monday Night Football to wrap up the week between the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. With that, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Cowboys. And they were able to find some success running the football, which is something they'll need to continue to do in a close game like this one. But meanwhile, for the Titans, 
Here's a look at their numbers throwing the football in what was a very even first half. Final adjustments being made in both locker rooms. We're just about ready for the second half. And for the call, let's get you back up to Nashville, Music City, and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. The Titans getting set to go here to begin the third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Tannehill now to throw. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. An 11 yard pickup for the Titans at a first down. They had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. He gets this one to Burks. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. On second down, here's Henry. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I think it's pretty evident. We can say what a difference a week makes last week. He ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Oh, boy, he fielded it right on the goal line. And that decision's only going to wind up costing him a yard or two as he's tackled just shy of the 20. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 18. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's caught. It's James Washington. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 36 yards on the play. It's not often that you'll find offensive and defensive guys that'll agree on much, but one place they find common ground, you've got to protect or attack the middle of the field. And no one was there. What a big play moving it downfield. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. It's another first down as they bite off 23 more on that one. Out of the gun, it's Elliott. Pushes him over, and they will get this down to the 10. 97 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Now Prescott. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by Amani Hooker. And nothing but daylight ahead. The 40, 30, the 20. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So what a turn of events there. You're driving to take the lead in this third quarter, but then one mistake, and you're watching the ball being returned for a touchdown. Certainly a great example of how focus has to be there on every play, doesn't it, partner? You can't get complacent, and I think that he did. He's got him moving downfield, but that's a play where he just shouldn't have thrown the football, and it ultimately could wind up costing him the ball game. Joseph connects on the extra point. 
and the lead is now 21 14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. Fields it right around the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Dallas offense set for this next drive. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll hand it off to Elliott to begin the drive. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Third quarter action here in this regular season finale. This will be second and 10. To throw is Prescott. He'll set up the screen to Elliott. And some room to run now. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Personal foul. Roughing the staff on defense. Well, Charles, sometimes we talk about the lengths officials sometimes go to to protect star quarterbacks, but that one, that was tough to argue against. Yeah, and I'm sure that everyone's going to say, hey, we're going to administer the penalty the same way for all quarterbacks. But when it's a star back there, even more so are they going to be diligent about throwing the flag. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Prescott. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked by Kevin Byard. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, given 14. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right. He's... And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Micah Parsons from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Nashville. It's the Titans. They've got the football. They'll be looking to extend their lead here as we begin the fourth quarter. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Now it's Tannehill. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Demarcus Lawrence able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. On his Kern, the punter, to send this one away. And taken at the 46. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Cowboys are going to take over in great position here with a first and 10. Cowboy offense heading out. Let's take a look at the playoff picture coming into the weekend in the NFC. And with the final fortnight of games upon us, teams jockeying for position. Some of these games really starting to take enormous importance as they always do this time of year. I like how you use fortnight. That you impressed, yeah, I you? am impressed. That means two weeks, if that, I'm not that mistaken. Does. Correct? That does. But how about exactly what you're talking about? Going down the stretch, how much importance is placed on these games? Look, everyone talks about every game's important. <laughs> when you get to this time of year, Maybe that importance gets quadruple, and that's where we are right now to see who can make their last run, their last push to get into the playoffs. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays harder to move it. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. It's a keeper with Prescott. And he is going to have the Cowboys first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Prescott.
Prescott to throw this time. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. We've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions, it just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass is almost a win. And now here's another interception. Kevin King with a pick. There he goes, right side. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So this defense doubling its pleasure there. Remember, they had the fumble return for a score earlier in the game, and now this time an interception return for another score. Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And we'll see if they can band back together after the pick six. It hurt badly, but still within striking distance. A two-score game with a good chunk of time on the clock. Downfield throw tip, but he still got it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Bud Dupree off the edge and getting to the quarterback. But many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. And yeah, they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That one covers 29 yards, first down. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Here's Dak. He finds his man complete. That's Schultz. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. So a seven-point game. They'll need a recovery, the touchdown, and an extra point to tie. And the Titans are going to recover the football. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it. But even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll run it again with Henry. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw, out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. And he will have the Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The Titans go victory formation as they take an knee. Yeah. 
Henry up the middle. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. We're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Tannehill to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And I tell you what, I can't remember a defensive performance as good as this one. They seemingly forced turnover after turnover after turnover every time you turned around. Yeah, you just keep going with it, can't you? After turnover, after turnover. <laughs> as this game unfolded, they were doing all the dictating, right? They dealt the offense exactly how it was going to go down today. So you saw them deflate with every series, didn't you? Every time they ran onto the field, it was slower and slower to get to the football because they just felt like if we go out there, we're just going to turn it over anyway. So it was really, really a stellar performance. So for the Titans, they get a six win of the season to go with their 10 losses. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week. Meanwhile,